Greetings, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am Frank Benson Jones, and I welcome you to this session of Bible study. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell so you can get a notice whenever new lessons are added. And please give a thumbs up to the individual Bible studies that you enjoy. During this session, we will discuss the topic of obedience. We will begin our study in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. The second verse, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Uh, the Amaleks had fought against uh, Israel during the Exodus, and God remembered that. 1 Samuel 15 and 3. Now go, this is God speaking, now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all they have, and spare them not. Uh, but slay both men and women, infant and sucklings, ox and sheep, uh, camel and ass, to destroy everything that the Amalekites had. In the seventh verse, 1 Samuel 15 and 7, And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou cometh to Shur, that is over against Egypt. So Saul did part of what God had told him to do, but we will see that partial obedience is the same as disobedience. The eighth verse, And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Now God had told him to destroy everything, all the people and the animals. In the ninth verse, 1 Samuel 15 and 9, but Saul and the people spared Agag, and they were not told to spare anybody by God, and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fattening, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. Now they're deciding to disobey God. But everything that was vile and refuse, that they destroyed utterly. Now what they've done, they've made up their own mind to keep some of the good things and let uh, Agag stay alive, Agag who was the king of the Amalite, Amalekites and so now they're disobeying God. Now Saul is going to lie. 1 Samuel 15 and 20 And Saul said unto Samuel, Samuel the prophet, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag the king of the Amaleks uh, the king of Amalek and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. That's what he is saying, but he did not utterly destroy them. 1 Samuel 15, 21. Now we're going to see that Saul is going to lie. But the people, he's going to blame somebody else. He is the king and God has made him king and he should obey God. But he says, but the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen, the chief are the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God and Gilgal. Now, this is important. They're going to use their own understanding of what God wants done and disobey God. The Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. Do what, and he will direct your path. Do what God tells anybody and everybody who is a Christian to do. 1 Samuel 15, 22. Now we're going to see that Samuel re rebukes Saul. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, now here's our lessons uh, in this text, in this particular biblical text. To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken uh, than the fat of the rams. That means that the to listen to God and do what he says is more important than the fat of the rams, but to obey is better than anything that we can sacrifice unto God. 
And because Saul disobeyed the word of God, God took the kingdom from Saul. Let us look now in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity under control every thought to the obedience of Christ. We're now in the new covenant and God has turned everything over to his son, Jesus Christ, and we are to obey him. So we should bring every thought in our, that we can think of or conceive into the obedience of Christ. God wants us to be obedient. And because some people don't want to be obedient and disobey the words of Jesus Christ, in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, Jesus speaks and he says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? If God has said something, if Jesus has said something, and again I say Jesus is God in the flesh, then we must obey what he says. There's no need of calling him Lord Jesus and then disobeying. Romans chapter 6 verse 16. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. If you obey God and obey Jesus in this dispensation, you're a servant of Jesus Christ. But if you obey Satan, then you are a servant of Satan, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. We have to choose. Am I going to be obedient? And we should choose to be obedient if we want to get the rewards that God has for his chosen people. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, knowing this, that Jesus is coming back. He's coming back again. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, those who are doing the will of God can rest, even though they may feel like they're troubled. They can rest with the Christians who are at ease and at, at peace with God. He's coming back. Jesus is coming back. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8, uh, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and the, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming back to take vengeance on those who do not obey. But those who do obey and who are troubled can rest with us. Trust in the Lord and with all of your, with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. And for those people who do not do the will of God, who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 9 says, Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction, from the presence of the Lord. They will no longer be in God's presence where he has his glory and from the glory of his power. People who disobey and don't obey Jesus Christ will be punished. So it's better to obey than to sacrifice. You can't give enough money to the church or to the poor or do anything else that is under normal circumstances considered to be righteous. If you're disobeying something else that God has told you to do, he will punish you with everlasting de destruction from his presence. We will no longer see the glory of God. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 tells us, Elect, that's us, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. According to the foreknowledge of God, God knew before he laid the foundation of the earth who would be those to enter into his kingdom of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, or by the Spirit of God, uh, we are led to be obedient unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, making it effective for us, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Those who are the elect of God, and God has chosen, who will enter into his kingdom, uh, they have been sanctified by the Spirit, and they are, are obedient. That's what God wants, is obedient people. And the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus that is uh, effectively for us. That his blood is sprinkled upon us and covers our sins. The third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
which according to his abundant mercy, it's by God's mercy, his grace and mercy, has begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because we accept the fact that Jesus has been risen, uh, risen and resurrected from the dead, and because God is a merciful God, full of grace and mercy, he has begotten us and brought us again to a lively hope, the hope of going into God's heavenly kingdom. And what is this lively hope, this living hope? It's to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. That who is that you? Those who have obeyed Jesus Christ. Those who by the sanctification, as it says up in the second verse, by the sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience. Obey our Lord and Savior. Do not call him your Lord if he doesn't do, if you don't do, what he says. He says, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say. God wants obedient people, and he wants that more than he wants sacrifice. You can, don't have enough money to please God without obeying him. As a song that I heard Mahalia Jackson sing, if salvation was something that money could buy, then the rich would live and the poor would die. But thank God for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we are obedient to his teaching, we will go into an uh, inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away. May God bless and keep you. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Amen.